parenteral medications. Name three parts of a syringe. List five factors to consider when selecting a syringe and needle. Explain the rationale for redesigning conventional syringes and needles. Name three ways that pharmaceutical companies prepare parenteral drugs. Discuss an appropriate action before combining two drugs in a single syringe. List four injection routes. Identify common sites for intradermal, subcutaneous, and intramuscular injections. Name a type of syringe commonly used to administer an intradermal, subcutaneous, and intramuscular injection. Describe the angles of entry for intradermal, subcutaneous, and intramuscular injections. Discuss why most insulin combinations must be administered within 15 minutes of being mixed. Describe two techniques for preventing bruising when administering heparin subcutaneously. Syringes. All syringes contain a barrel, a plunger, and a tip or hub. They're calibrated in milliliters, cubic centimeters, units, and in some cases, minims. Millimeters is abbreviated ML, cubic centimeters, CC, units, capital U, and minims, small m. Parts of a syringe, tip, barrel, and plunger. For needles, there's various lengths and gauges. Shaft is the length of the needle. Gauge is the diameter of the needle. Gauges start at 18 and go to 27 gauge. The smaller the number, the larger the diameter. Lengths vary from approximately 0.5 to 2.5 inches. Filter needles are medication needles used to draw from a glass ampule. You can see in this picture the shaft and the lumen of the needle and the bevel. Insulin pens. They look like a pre-filled fountain pen. The dose is dialed in. It displays on the pen window. They automatically reset to zero after administering. And they are disposable needles, not the fountain pen part. Just the needle part is disposable. So you can see where the needle shield is. You can see where the insulin reservoir is, the dose window, and the injection button. Selecting a syringe and needle depends on the type of medication, the depth of tissue that you need to go into, the volume of the prescribed drug, the viscosity of the drug or thickness, and the size of the client. You need to avoid needle stick injuries. Plastic shields that cover the needle after use are incorporated now. Needles that retract into the syringe are incorporated for safety and gas pressure devices that inject medications without needles are also being used. You can see the pictures. Uh, the first one is a safety feature that clicks into place and the second one slides. Before administering an injection, you have a protective cap covering a needle. Um, the only time that you cover the needle is using the scoop method. As you can see, you should have your needle top against something non-movable, not you, not your hands, but non-movable, and you push the needle into the cap that is leaning against a solid, non-movable object. You also want to be prepared after administering an injection not to leave the um, needle around. You need to not cap it and deposit it into the nearest biohazard container. What's the function of a syringe barrel? Does it hold the medicine, withdraw the medicine, instill the medicine, or attach the needle? It holds the medicine. The barrel is the part of the syringe that holds the medicine. The plunger is a part of the syringe within the barrel that moves back and forth to withdraw and instill the medicine. The tip or hub is the part of the syringe to which the needle is attached. Here you can see an ampule, vial, and pre-filled cartridge. The ampule is to the left. 
the vial to the right and forward is the pre-filled cartridge. The ampule is a sealed glass drug container. The vial is a glass or plastic container of parenteral medication with a self-sealing rubber stopper and um, another definition is reconstitution, a process of adding liquid known as a diluent to a powdered substance. In the foreground of the picture, however, that is a uh, pre-filled syringe. Drug preparation, you have pre-filled cartridges that are sealed glass cylinders of parenteral medication. The needle can be attached. The cylinder is made so that it fits into a specially designed syringe. If you look at the barrel syringe in the top left uh, picture, that white plastic is a um, cylinder made to hold the cartridge to give the shot. Combining medications in one syringe, you need to have exact amounts must be withdrawn from each drug container. Once the drugs are in the barrel of the syringe, there is no way to expel one without expelling some of the other. Injection routes, there's intradermal injections between the layers of the skin. The purposes for intradermal would be a tuberculin test, an allergy test. Injection sites are the inner aspect of the forearm. The injection equipment is a tuberculin syringe. It's a 25 to 27 gauge needle, one half inch in length. Injection technique. Instill the medicine shallow, shallowly at a 10 to 15 degree angle. You can see the different angles here. This picture is showing you a slice of skin, subcutaneous tissue, and muscle. So for the intradermal, you're going to be in the picture A. The epidermis of the skin is where you're injecting. In the picture B, that is injecting into the sub-Q tissue. Do you see it's a 45 degree angle? In picture C, they are injecting into the muscle, and that is a 90 degree angle. And also for IVs, they're showing you um, in picture D that they are going through the sub-Q tissue into a vein. Subcutaneous injections are beneath the skin but above the muscle. The medication is absorbed fairly rapidly. It's commonly used to administer insulin and heparin. One injection site is the abdomen. The injection equipment depends on the type of medication prescribed. Example is insulin. You only use an insulin syringe for insulin. For heparin, you may use a tuberculin syringe. Injection techniques for obese clients, the nurse inserts the needle at a 90 degree angle. For thin clients, the nurse inserts the needle at a 45 degree angle. And that is for sub-Q injections. Administering insulin, preparing insulin, very varies in onset time, peak effect, and duration. There is an additive to delay absorption. Um, in intermediate acting insulin. You want to rotate the vial between the palms when you are mixing the insulin before you draw it up. Mixing insulins, insulins tend to bind and become equilibrated. They should be injected within 15 minutes of being combined. Rapid and short combined with intermediate is possible. Long acting glargine or lantus is never mixed. Premixed combinations could be Novelin 70-30 with Humulin 50-50. Which angle is used by the nurse to administer a subcutaneous injection to a thin client? 90, 15 degrees, 10 degrees, or 45 degrees? Your answer should be 45 degrees. For obese clients and when administering intramuscular injections, the nurse inserts the needle at a 90 degree angle. When giving an intradermal injection, the nurse instills the medication shallowly at a 10 to 15 degree angle of entry. Administering heparin. 
An anticoagulant drug, heparin, prolongs the time it takes for blood to clot. You administer subcutaneously or intravenously. You want to exchange the needle after withdrawal of the drug from a multi-dose vial and replace it with another one before administration. The injection site is not cleaned with an alcohol wipe. Do not aspirate. The needle is left in place for five seconds. Control the bleeding by local pressure, no massaging, and rotate sites. The dose is changed based on lab values. A low molecular weight of heparin is called enoxaprine, and that is a consistent daily dose, whereas heparin could be changed in terms of dosing um, based on lab values. Intramuscular injections in muscle tissue up to 3 milliliters at a time. Absorption occurs more rapidly than from the other parenteral routes. Injection sites are the dorsal gluteal site, the upper outer quadrant of the buttocks, the ventrogluteal sites, the gluteus medius and gluteus minimus muscles, the vastus lateralis site, the vastus lateralis muscle on the outer thigh, the rectus femoris site is the anterior aspect of the thigh, and the deltoid site, which is the lateral aspect of the upper arm. Injection equipment is three to five milliliter syringes are used to administer medications by the intramuscular route. Intramuscular injections, the equipment is a three to five milliliter syringe. The injection technique is a 90 degree angle for piercing the skin. An important technique to learn is the Z-Track technique. This is used for manipulating the tissue to seal medication, especially an irritating medication in the muscle. Use the Z-Track method for intramuscular injections to decrease the discomfort. Apply pressure to the site during the needle withdrawal and massage the site afterward if appropriate. Which intramuscular injection site is used for clients with debilitated and poorly developed gluteal muscles? Is it the deltoid, the vastus lateralis, the rectus femoris, or the ventrogluteal? In this case, it's the vastus lateralis. The site is used for clients with debilitated and poorly developed gluteal muscles. The deltoid site is used for adults. The rectus femoris site is used for infants and the ventrogluteal site is used for children. This is the end of the slideshow.